All right, welcome back to the channel. This was our training that went kind of crazy. So let's go over what happened here and why this pit malfunction. So thank you, Al, for showing me this. This is from what you haven't seen. I'll put the link in the description. But this is how a pit should normally function. It's a very thin layer of water, right? That we put in. And then we have our propane pipes run along through the great drain. Okay? Now the propane bubbles up through the pipes, comes up to the water and then the water helps evenly disperse it out. Otherwise, if there wasn't the water in here, it would look like a grill. Right? Um, so it evenly disperses the propane across the, uh, the surface. The little sensors, that's what these are, the thermocouples that are attached to them. In between the two pedestals uh, in the middle is a, basically a, a server room. There's a bunch of computers in there, which is crazy. So that's kind of how uh, it should work here. So they can put the propane through those little um, those little holes in the ground. And then there's sensors that show if it's getting uh, if water is hitting those sensors, then it'll shut off to, to simulate that the water put out the fire. But this is the normal normal training evolution. You can see they have that quadrant going. You can pull hand lines. It's very safe. So this is when the thing goes wrong. So this was in 2013. Um, Port of Seattle Fire Department came in to do training at the Washington State uh, Patrol Fire Training Center in North Bend. And there were the props wouldn't turn off. So that was one of the problems. So they tried to turn this thing off. The thing wouldn't shut off. And then also there was contaminated water. I guess they're using a closed system. So I don't know if it's a fuel water separator problem where... The fuel wasn't getting separated, and because it's a closed system, somehow fuel got into their supply where they where their hydrants were to resupply. So these trucks were filled with kind of like sludgy fuel water, from what I read. And when they sprayed it on the fire to put it out, it actually caused the fuel mixture that was in the trucks to light off the pit even more. So you can see how it's turning into a huge fireball when they're shooting water on it because that is contaminated water so it's kind of crazy you're going to notice that the trucks that are contaminated they they stopped using them so you can see they they did the smart thing they knew something was wrong and um, a few days earlier sludge was seen coming out of the hydrant so they tried to flush it but i guess it didn't flush all the way there's still contaminated water um, they stopped training days prior because of this problem. Um, the pit was acting up uh, the week prior to. It wouldn't turn off. Um, it, and it was put out of service ever since this drill, as far as I know, unless they had it, they got it fixed. But multiple problems going on, contaminated trucks, also the malfunctioning pit. So they're going to try to use this truck, which I believe is filled, serviced with clean water from a different water source. So that's the only way they could continue training. Um, the good thing about this training pits are, you can see there's nothing around it. There's trees far off in the distance, but nothing that's going to really cause any exposures to catch on fire. So whatever's in this pit is isolated and there should be no injuries in this kind of situation even though it looks like oh, there's a lot of fire burning there's nothing in there burning it's all metal and then whatever propane they're using um will burn out so you can see now they're pulling hand lines they're probably thinking well the fire we might as well get some good training out of it while we still have the fire going and then they also want to put it out as best as they can so they're gonna start pulling hand lines continue their training Again, it's isolated in the pit, nothing to worry about as long as they keep the personnel outside of the pit and no sense in going in there for no reason. So yeah, here we go. Now they're pulling their hand lines in, they're continuing their training. Again, the contaminated trucks are out, are out of service. Um, in the control tower, the emergency stop was continuously trying to be hit to see if they could stop the fire. Um, you can see here, it's still coming out of um, 
the propane uh, little spots that they have. But yeah, a lot of things. Basically, it's a maintenance thing. Um, when these problems happen, you you try to write it up, and you have maintenance fix it. In this case, it wasn't fixed in time. There's probably a lot of pressure with training that needed to be hap that needed to happen because every year we need to have a live fire drill. So maybe these firefighters needed their certifications for the year, so they tried to push through and get this the live fire um, done, and it they got a little more than they asked for. But all, all in all, there was no injuries. So that's good. And they just had to fix the problems with the pit and everything will be all good. And now they're trying to use the master stream from this truck, but it um, doesn't seem like they have the same. These trucks don't have the same amount of pressure as our ARF trucks. Our ARF trucks has 240 PSI, so you can really get water on the fire. Um, but this is more of a, a engine, a normal engine. But if you missed uh, yesterday's video, this guy from Guatemala, he jumped in this wheel, wheel well of this 737, and uh, he was in that compartment, and he went two two hours in uh, freezing conditions. So if you want to watch that video, I'll put it here. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.